Hello, thanks for tuning in to Rocky Mountain Adventure Vans. I'm Jeffrey, this is Tucker, and we're playing with uh, solar panels and batteries, and so today I thought, why don't I shoot five minutes about uh, the mysteries of solar <laughs> and how, how uh, these systems work are, are not that complicated once someone explains it. And I thought I would just explain what we're looking at here, these solar panels are going to go on the roof. The reason I need them is to charge these batteries, which basically power, you know, lights, <laughs> refrigerators, our heaters, the ceiling fans. And this van's in production, so it's kind of a good time to, um, you know, not everything's all finished off in here. So as I'm working on it, I thought I would shoot these how-to videos uh, or w some or whatever this was more of a explanatory video so it this van's already wired up with batteries and in this box I made uh, something durable to be around them because I wanted all the um, well, this I wanted to be able to pack gear back here without worrying about this <laughs> so what we're looking at here is a uh, you know these are they're a different color but they're the same um two bad two big uh deep cycle batteries that each these are these are uh two 90 amp hour batteries there's a lot of spe specifications on a battery but what i care about most in my application is like what the amp hours of the battery are and it's what that's the reserve power that they have and so one of them has a hundred together tied together like this positive to positive negative to negative it doubles it to 200 amp hours um, so I got 180 amp hours with this little arrangement and then basically all of these things you know this is gonna be cleaned up but this van's still in production so I haven't made all the little labels and stuff and whatever but this fuse panel is where all of the uh, all of the appliances in the van are are all coming into this and they have um, either 10 or 15 amp fuses on them um, so here's my fan you know here's the lead for the fans the, this blue this guy they're all labeled I don't think they're gonna show up on the video but here's the inverter here's the fridge here's my main lights and everything comes in is fused before it goes to the batteries um, and then I have one lead one positive lead that ties to the to the posts of the battery right and um, before I explain everything else you might be looking at, uh, that's the basic. So the van's powered from this bank. Um, the thing is, is that they drain, right? And they have to be, um, ba basically, one way or another, The whether it's through solar or through the truck itself, um, we have to keep these batteries full. They are designed, uh, they're... they're different than a starting battery where a starting battery has to stay at uh, pretty much at 90% more than 90% full all the time for them to function properly and have a long life deep cycle batteries are designed to um, cycle down they say as low as 50% um, and and then re recycle uh, you know recapture the recharge them they um, can go through a, a set of batteries like this can go through 300 full cycles and you know they say they'll last for 10 years on you know but it's really about the cycles that the battery goes through of them draining and filling back up um so it's not a it's a matter of like how many you know how much use they get so um we in order to take care of a battery properly the batteries like to be full right and so we want some system this my preferred method is to use two, both solar and the truck itself, to pop, to charge, the, keep these things full, um, because the solar panels tend to be more of like a trickle charge, whereas the truck, uh, the truck's alternator gives it a full charge really fast. As a 220 amp alternator, as opposed to you know 12 amps from my panel uh, system. So, um, what, what we're looking at right here um, is one of the ways that one of the two ways that I charge these batteries. This isolator is um, is in between, this red lead that I'm holding goes back to the, uh, 
goes back to the truck's positive um, lead on the, the truck's battery. Comes back um, before I put it uh, in between the truck's battery and these batteries, um, we put this battery isolator. So basically, when the truck's on, these um, all the batteries are tied together and charging off the alternator. And when we shut the truck off, um, this is a voltage sensor. So when you shut the truck off and put a load on, the um, they'll stay connected as long as the amps are the voltage is up at 13.1, is which is what a full charge on a battery is. As soon as you put a load on it, it'll drop down to like 12.9. As soon as the, the, the sensor senses that the voltage has dropped to 12.9, it'll cut off the front batteries from these. And now I can drain these as much as I want without hurting my starter battery. Um, and then when I turn the truck back on and, we're, and, and it senses 13 volts, it'll let them tie back together. So batteries are all, a group, all act as a group. So they charge together and drain together. Um, and that's why we need to isolate these back ones we can't have that starting battery ever getting below 90 percent these ones we can you know turn the truck off and and, and turn the fridge on and, and turn all the lights on and everything we, um, it's only affecting these batteries um, so uh, the preferred method is solar it's um whatever it, you know it's it's very reliable it allows you to have the truck off for uh longer periods of time so I can stay a few days boondocking out in the middle of some, nowhere without worrying about having to turn the truck on to charge these batteries. Um, the panels will keep them uh, as long as you know there's factors with solar with solar panels right so right now actually is a perfect example we have a cloudy day here here in um, the Roaring Fork Valley in Colorado and Tucker is so bored he's like rain means no fun but these, these panels won't get much of a charge on a day like this. I won't max them out at 12 amps, right? So, um, you know, it's not completely foolproof, this solar thing. So I like using both tied together. Um, so these are two, I'm using 200 watt panels. It's because of the size. You can buy a 200 watt panel, but then the dimensions are, um, to use them on the roof, um, I prefer 200 watt ones tied together to get the, you know, um, the 12 amps, they're six amps a panel. So, um, we have them tied together with these MC4 connectors. Um, there is, um, you know, this is 12 gauge. Uh, these are probably 10 gauge. This is 10 gauge, um, UV rated solar wire with MC4 connectors. And so these connectors are making two panels into one you know, these are both the positives and then both the negatives on the other set. Um, and there's, a, you know, there's this idea that um, wire is wire, and that's not actually true. So here we have some speaker wire, and here we have solar wire. The difference between them is it's true that what's inside these casings is the same. Stranded wire is stranded wire. Um, and so we have um you know we'll get a current through both of them the thing the the difference what's <laughs> the reason why this um cost this you know this uv this um solar cable is actually uv rated and can be out exposed to the elements for years and years um uh, whereas the the insulation on these speaker wires is um wouldn't last very long in the outdoors and it's a problem you know you, you wind up with shorts and potential fire hazards if your insulation is breaking down and your wire is exposed to is um not uh, you know if your wire is touching metal it'll create an arc it's a fire danger um so there are issues with this it's not to be taken lightly and all so anyways and I wanted to just wrap it up by talking about the batteries themselves. Um, so these batteries, they look kind of weird, right? They're not your regular interstate batteries. These came out of a solar backup system. Um, they look kind of generic because they are, but they're actually really heavy. Um, these are, <laughs> these are taught, this is as great as they come. Um, these recapture, these recapture a charge 
faster and um, cycles uh, cycle better in in every way. They have a higher they have hun- this, these will get about 300 cycles out of them. It'll last about 10 years. Um, the way that I use them and. You know, you can see, here's what you want to look for with batteries. You know, these are used, but it's okay uh, that they're used as long as your batteries will last for years and years if you take good care of them. And if they stay at a full, batteries like to be full. And so keeping them on a charging system like I do, I um, um, they never get um, full cycles. And so these batteries have been floating. The reason I knew they were okay is they're after not being charged for a couple of weeks they're still floating at 12 volts and that's great um, so once I um, you know we buy these I love buying these off of solar the solar arrays are um, by design they, they they take care of the batteries that they're charging um, because they keep them floated at like 90 to 100 percent all the time so even though these batteries are two years old they're a lot like they were when they were brand new because they've been floating at a full charge um, since they were all tied together. And um, I love these batteries. <laughs> they last forever. They're, uh, the other thing about them is that they're AGM, um, absorbed glass mat batteries, as opposed to lead acid. AGM batteries um, are preferred because they won't freeze until negative 30. Your, lead, your regular interstate lead acid batteries um, they're not only are they dangerous because you can spill them <laughs> um, they also they'll freeze at around zero around five degrees you're getting a frozen battery five degrees to zero batteries like swell and freeze and crack um, and they're very dangerous to have inside of a vehicle those types because you can't spill them they'll, they'll that stuff inside them is um is uh you know battery acid obviously right well these you can turn on their sides and flip over they're safe and they're fully um contained and safe to have in a vehicle they won't have any gas coming from them lead acid batteries also have a potentially harm harmful gas and so we like agm batteries these guys um will tie these in groups of two right so these are tied together and ready to go for a customer um so we'll power a whole van with two of these um, tied together like they are positive to positive, negative to negative, and have uh, have all the power we need. And, and, and so these batteries are going to get tied to those panels <laughs> right there, uh, put on the roof uh, of another Sprinter. And then we can power all the 12 volt stuff we want. And if we want to power household items that are used to 110, you use an inverter. That's, and they'll just plug right into this thing. This is just a 300 watt inverter, but it's a pure sign. It'll, um, the pure sign inverter has a better wave um, for electronics charging lithium batteries. Can be kind of a problem on regular inverters that aren't the higher end pure signs. Um, it has to do with the wave. Uh, and the the lithium batteries like pure sign inverters uh, the la- it'll help preserve the lithium battery in your laptop and in your phone so we buy kind of more high end inverters but you can buy you know uh, all this stuff comes there's a range of costs right for all of this stuff it's like you could buy lead, ad- lead acid batteries for <laughs> You could buy lead acid batteries like these for hundred dollars each. These are two hundred dollars each, right? Because they're 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 kind of it's a quality lifespan issue that you're gonna have uh, when you get one over the other. It's the same with these inverters. Like you can buy, you know, forty or fifty dollar ones, and you can buy three three hundred dollar ones, and it has to do with that. It's, uh, it's like that all through life, isn't it? And so that wasn't five minutes. That was 15 minutes of me talking about batteries and solar. And I hope you've learned something. I'm, I appreciate a, you know, we're committed to helping other people build their camper vans and take the mystery out of it. Um, it was all a mystery to me when I got started. And now eight or nine years later, I can um, build these top to bottom um, um, because people taught me, you know, and I took the time to learn and read and watch videos and whatever it was and now um you know i'm committed to like helping other people do the same thing and um the 
solar and battery setups can be a total mystery. And so, um, you know, we just use 15 minutes to explain it all. Um, thanks for tuning in and, uh, and we'll see you next time. Have fun.